Monday night. I swear since I started doing this, um, whole martinis have made a thing and doing something, you know, every Monday night. I swear the time is going by like so much quicker. Like, I, it's weird. Like, I don't go to like a normal like nine to five, eight to five kind of job thing, but I find myself like super busy all day, every day. It's really weird. But, um, anyways, hey y'all, it's Monday. It's November what, um, uh, 13th? November 13th? Oh, we're already halfway through November. Um, a few more weeks. Another week and a half, we got Thanksgiving, and then another f six, five and a half, six weeks until um, Christmas. It's just crazy talk there, isn't it? So, it's weird. Um, I set this, I set all of my stuff up earlier because when I do these videos, I don't like for stuff to be like, you know, all over my workspace basically in the video. I like to have, you know, clean workspace and then when I'm going to use it, I put it in front that way so um, you can see exactly what we're working with and you don't have all this other clutter and everything. So um, I'm quite amazed that the stuff that I just added a few minutes ago, you know, the last minute items is not in view. So, yay. Hey, right, so anyway, um, I spent today actually planning through the rest of the year and actually into February, January and February. And I say that because we've got ourselves a little trip back home coming um, around about the holidays or so soon after. And um, I wanted to make sure that I was covered for um, all the, you know, Monday nights and everything and make sure that I had, you know, stuff to post every day. So I've been working um, all day and got the majority of what I have planned, um, like I said, through the end of February. But right now, there are two days, there are two Mondays where I do not have Monday Lives, Monday Facebook Lives. I have a, um, of course, Christmas night and New Year's Eve night. So, like I said before in the past, I'm opening up this to, you know, anybody that watches. If you are a crafter, a, you know, chef a, or cook or have an awesome organization tip or have something that kids love or something, some sort of video, something that you got, you could do, um, you could video beforehand, um, we can talk, you can send me the, um, video and I will post it one of those two nights that way so um, I could share the spotlight with somebody so um, I have two right now two Monday nights that um, are open Christmas night Christmas Eve night or no Christmas night and New Year's Eve night or New Year's night the Monday and Monday Christmas night New Year's night so if you have something Christmas related or something that would do really well for that week um, let me know if you have something New Year's related or something that week that would do well. Let me know. And I would love to chat with you and possibly post a video in that Monday night instead of me being live. Alright, so, hmm, before we get started, this is probably like a creeper kind of thing. Kind of weird, probably. Yeah. My husband talks often about how observant I am. I've had several friends talk about how observant I am. I tend to um, see little details that others don't. Um, I like to say it's a good thing. I mean, being observant of details is a good thing. But, um... Sometimes, I mean, it kind of creeps me out and it makes me feel a bit like a creeper. Now, in the area that we live, we are in a long line of um, townhomes. And we are, I think, almost 
the youngest um, folks li living in this group of townhomes. There may be a um, another lady that might be a little bit younger. But anyways, we are some of the youngest ones living in this little line of townhomes. Well, um, we don't have much of a yard behind us. We have a fence blocking or a fence dividing the yard and the house behind us. And um, for the past year that we've lived here, there has been an older couple living in the house behind us. And every morning, is weird, I know these things, every morning between 8 and 9, 9 o'clock in the morning, they open their blinds or, you know, just, you know, open them up to where, you know, the slots are open. And then every night between um, 8 and 9 o'clock, they close them. Well, a couple nights ago, all the blinds were just like pulled all the way to the top. And a couple of them like were left open. It's been that way since probably Friday. Of course, my first thoughts are, has this couple been burglarized? But then really, what robbers would go and open up the blinds or whatever? I'm, in, in all honesty, they have probably um, put their house up for sale. And when they were cleaning, they probably left the blinds open or something like that. That's probably the logical thing. But in my head, I'm like, have they fallen and nobody is there to help them? Kind of thing. Or is something going on? Anyway, so every day, I'm like, when I let Riley out, I'm like looking to see if um, something's going on over there. Yeah, so. It's kind of like creeper status, isn't it? Probably. So, all right, tonight, <laughs> moving right along. Um, we got some winter beverages. We are gonna start with the salted caramel martini. We are going to um, move into the sangria, a caramel apple cider, and a hot buttered rum. Now, I have not tried any of those, but they all sounded awesome, so that's what we're gonna do. All right, salted caramel mar uh, martini. You need, of course, shaker with ice. You need half and half. You need salted caramel. Um, the, the syrup for the tea or coffee. Um, Irish cream and vodka. Of course, the dog wants to go out now. Well, unfortunately, he's going to have to wait. All right, so to get the salted part, you're going to need to take your martini glass. You're going to dip it into water. Then you are going to dip it into, you can't see it, sea salt. Just like that. And then you have a salted rim. Like that. Then you are going to, in your shaker, do one part vodka. You're going to do one part Irish cream. And Irish cream is probably one of my favorite liqueurs. It is so smooth. It goes so well with so many things. So yummy. Then you need um, two parts Half and half. And then you need half a part, half a part of this caramel syrup that you know is for teas and coffees and um, whatever else. You're gonna give it a good shake. Of course, the longer you shake, the colder it gets. I've never tried this before, but I am a sucker for anything salted caramel. I love salted caramel. It is a favorite fall 
flavor of mine. So, that is yummy. That is incredible, y'all. Salted caramel martini for the wind. I probably actually would not, I may actually add like a dash of salt into the martini as opposed to on the rim because you end up getting a very salty taste instead of it being like a good mixture. That's super awesome though. That's very, very good, very good. All right, so at three drinks for y'all tonight, that will make awesome, awesome, awesome um, drinks for you, for yourself to warm up this winter, to um, provide at any gatherings you guys have. Um, this is one of those like nights that, you know, is good for beverages for the holiday season. So we are gonna start with sangria. Now, I'm gonna, <laughs> need you to not look at this picture <laughs> because um, before we um, moved to Montana, we had a massive yard sale and I had a proper, nice, elegant glass pitcher. I had completely forgotten that I put it in the yard sale. So when I went looking a couple days ago for the pitcher, guess what? Couldn't find it. That's why, because I sold it. So I ran to Walmart and grabbed a cheapo $3 beer pitcher, basically. But this is what the pitcher, this is what Sangria is going in this evening. Um, it looks so much better in a beautiful glass pitcher, but um, I don't have that for you, and right now, since I am just beginning in this whole vlog thing, the budget's not there, so this is what you get. <laughs> All right, so what you need to do your um, sangria is you need a bottle of sangria. Buy some cheap stuff. Don't go trying to, you know, spend a ton of money on it. Um, buy some, just a cheap bottle of sangria. This was at Walmart Yellowtail Sangria for like, um, it was like five... 50, something like that. Um, you need 12 ounces of club soda. You can use Sprite or 7-Up. I actually prefer Sprite or 7-Up. It's a whole lot better than um, the club soda, but we're using the club soda tonight. You need to take an orange and a lemon and dice it into sli or, um, slice it into slices. And then um, it said that you needed two diced peaches. Surprisingly, I went to Walmart and Albertsons and there are no peaches in the produce section. So I bought a can of peaches. I, um, of course, drained all the liquid off of it and diced that up. So that's what we gotta do for this. Hey, so all you're doing, seriously, this is like one of your easiest things. And I love to do this the day before. And this is like my go-to thing for gatherings because it is so super simple. And you can do it the day before. <clears throat> Take a bottle of, um, like I said, super cheap sangria. Super cheap sangria. And I splashed that somehow all over the place. Um, then you're going to take 12 ounces of um, club soda, or you're going to pour in a can of Sprite or 7-Up. Then you are going to take your orange slices and your lemon slices and just drop them in there. And then you are going to dump your peach, diced peaches in there. And then the best thing you can do, in all honesty, is to let it sit overnight. This is one of those things that making it the day beforehand is so much better. Because you can make it the day beforehand, stick it in the fridge, and then the next day you take it out, and you can take out about half of the um, orange slices and the lemon slices. It'll look really pretty. 
but those um, the you know sangria will have absorbed a bunch of those flavorings so um, it's gonna taste so 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 much better so you've got a wonderful um, sangria that is awesome for um, parties and gatherings um, like I said this is like my go-to thing and um, one more tip <laughs> I'm sitting here reading my notes so don't um, call me out on that um, when you are slicing up those lemons in your oranges um, any parts that you're not using put into your garbage disposal hit the button to you know start your disposal and it will freshen it up it will help sharpen the blades and it takes away the stank so yeah so stick that sangria in the um, fridge and um, let it overnight and you will have perfection the next day all right now we're going to do a slow cooker a slow cooker apple cranberry apple cider cranberry apple cider so you're going to need of course a slow cooker and if you want you can put one of those liners in it I always prefer, I usually prefer to put a liner in it because it helps just with the cleaning process or whatever you're going to need um, one liter of apple juice one liter of cranberry juice both of them unsweetened unsweetened so it's then you're going to need two cups of orange juice, one half cup of sugar, three cinnamon sticks, one eighth teaspoon of ground cloves. So what we're going to do is we're going to just basically add all that together. Here is your liter of... Uh, I left my one eighth teaspoon in this. Like I told y'all, I'm not Martha Stewart. <laughs> I never claim to be. Um, then you need your one liter of apple juice. And it does specify something like make sure you have at least four quarts. Um, slow cooker. And then you need two cups of OJ orange juice and I'm sure that it's not like that precise two cups of OJ you need one half cup sugar this is not alcoholic too one half cup sugar. You're going to drop three cinnamon sticks in there. And I forgot to open this earlier today. That's one of those prep things that I um, forgot to do. You need three cinnamon sticks. Just drop them in there. And then the last thing you need is one eighth. teaspoon of ground cloves one eighth teaspoon of ground cloves then you are going to um, of course stir all of that up then you are going to put it on low for three to four hours this is one of those things that's perfect if you're having a party, having gatherings. Um, you put it on low for three to four hours. Once it is, has hit that point, you um, drink what you would like. And you can refrigerate the leftovers and reheat later. And it is perfect. So, I'm going to stick that on there and move it to the side. I will start it up here in a bit. So like I said, low, three to four hours. And you've got yourself a wonderful drink that will warm you up. All right, this last one. I actually listed up last winter, a couple winters ago. Um, we moved to Montana and we had the um, bitterly cold 
temps. I um, had heard so much about this. I never tried it. Mostly because um, I don't drink a ton of rum. It's weird because in college I loved rum. Rum was like my go-to and I hated vodka. Well, as the years have gone by, my um, I tend to combine vodka with my the drinks that I enjoy. And I don't prefer rum. So tonight we are doing um, a hot buttered rum. And of course you're going to need hot, hot, hot water, which I'm starting to up now. You're going to need one stick of unsalted butter, three-fourths cup of brown sugar, one half teaspoon of cinnamon, one fourth teaspoon of nutmeg, a pinch of salt, and a pinch of ground cloves. And that's going to get really loud and annoying. I'm sorry, but it is what it is. All right, so. It's one of those things that, like I said, when we moved up here and it was so just like bitterly cold, I looked it up. I've never actually had before, but I'm, this is like one of those things I'm like super looking forward to. You need three fourths cup. Says about a pinch, and then you need a pinch of ground cloves. I apologize, y'all. I'm yes, I am this sporadic. I do not like things under my nails, though. That is not gonna work for me. Then you're gonna put your one stick of butter, which is supposed to be softened. One stick of unsoftened, basically a half cup of unsaltened butter. And you are going to mash all of that together. And this is not going as planned. It's probably not as soft as it should be. I probably should stick it in the microwave for a tad because I thought it would be soft enough. Yeah, so like I said, I'm not going to do it. I um, think I got it all together, but then something like this happens and I don't. So, anyways, you can mash all of that together. Let's hope that's all it needs. Because in all honesty, this is going to be one of those things that you can make in bulk. If you can make it in bulk, then you can store it in mason jars and give us gifts. I 
am throwing stuff all over the place. Um, this is one of those things that you can use in the winter. You can make it just by the cup full, just for yourself. And will certainly warm you up because once you have the batter made, you're good to go. And once you have the butter completely incorporated, okay. Once you have the butter completely incorporated, what you're going to do is you are going to take your mug, you are going to take two heaping spoonfuls. It did say specifically heaping spoonfuls. We're going to add um, six ounces of hot water, boiling water which I measured that out earlier. And then you are going to add two ounces of your dark or spiced rum. And we're going to find something to mix it with. Uh, where did my fork go that I had earlier in the bowl? You're going to mix that up until it is all melted. I am such a messy. You're going to make sure it's all melted and um, Incorporate within the water. Like I said, I am a nut so with holiness. Then you can add your whipped cream. Oh, snap. And then you add dash of nutmeg or cinnamon and now you have a hot buttered rum do you like that I hear it's like awesome I'm one of those people's like I like things to cool down first though my husband's one of those that he can like drink things immediately like as soon as it comes out of the um, kettle, I give it a good like 15 minutes or so. So anyways, hot buttered rum, that's it. So perfect for, um, you know, parties. Um, this is one of those things that you can mix up and put into jars and give us gifts, um, holiday gatherings, whatever. So um, I know here in Montana, it is, um, while it feels like spring today, it's gonna get cold again soon. So, um, perfect for us here in Alabama, not so much. But, um, anyways, hopefully, you guys try one of these soon. Let me know how it is for you guys. Um, next week, cranberry apple martinis, cran apple martinis. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make this guy. Little flowers. Yep, show you guys how to do this. Um, this is something that I've seen perfectly um, done, like on um, for parties, like party decor, done on the walls in different colors. Um, or in my head, this is gonna work. If I take out this middle section and um, put a vase, 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 depending on where you are in the country. Um, put it on your table, beautiful table decor. So that is next week. So 
So all that being said, it is right at six o'clock, so that means it's time for me to go. Um, like I said, if in the next, um, if you are somebody that has something you want to share, I have two openings, Christmas night and New Year's Eve night. I would love to post your video of something you have to share on those nights. Um, let me know and we'll chat. Um, with all that being said, I will see you guys next week. Bye, y'all.